when cicadas chorus the barbet is one of those birds which are heard more often than they are seen some of visitors to shimla masuri and other north indian hill resorts will be familiar with its monotonous far reaching call pihu pihu it keeps to the tops of high trees where it is not easily distinguished from the foliage barbets love listening to their own voices and often two or three birds answer each other from different trees each trying to outdo the other in a shrill shouting match although most birds are noisy during the mating season barbets are noisy all the year round there are some who like the barbets call and consider it both striking and pleasant others don't like it and simply consider it striking up here in the garhwal himalayas there is a legend that the bird is the reincarnation of a money lender who died of grief at the unjust domination of a lawsuit eternally his plaintive cries rise to the heaven uh 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 which means injustice injustice so the babet's call can be interpreted in various ways to me it always sounds like pakdo pakdo or catch him catch him and of course there's a story about how a babet helped to catch a thief now that the monsoon rains are here the occasional snake flooded out of its hole makes it appearance on the road or hill sides most of the snakes up here are perfectly harmless carrying only enough venom to paralyze their natural prey which consists of frogs rats earthworms small birds and smaller snakes recently i saw two pretty green and brown snakes on the hill side I have no idea what they are called. I cannot pretend to be an expert on recognizing all the denizens of the wild, and never cease to wonder at the sharp-eyed observations of well-known naturalists who can tell a bullfinch from a chaffinch at a distance of 60 meters, or distinguish a pit viper from a soy-scaled viper in one hurried glance. I suspect some of them are just showing off. The experts. I mean snakes don't show off however as regards the snakes on my hillside i can say with certainty that one is brown and one is green and personally i prefer the green one the postman who almost showed on it the other day wanted it killed but i quoted the saying of buddha krishna and confucius and persuaded him to let it live in some form of incarnation it might well have been related to us i said perhaps an aunt or distant cousin although he wasn't quite convinced and nor was i but the conversation gave the snake enough time to slip away the postman no longer enters at the gate but leaves my letters in a hole in the wall during monsoon our insect musicians are rose to their greatest activity At dusk the air seems to tinkle and murmur to their music to the shrilling of the grasshopper is added to staccato notes of the crickets while in the grass and on the trees a myriad of laser artists are producing a variety of sounds as musicians the cicadas are a class of their own all through the monsoon the screaming chorus rings through the forest a shower of rain far from dampening their ardor only rouses them to a deafening crescendo of effort as with most insect musicians the males do the performing while the females remain silent this moved one chauvinist greek poet to exclaim happy the cicadas for they have voiceless wives to which i would respond by saying pity the female cicadas for they have singing husbands probably the most familiar and homely of insect singers are the crickets i won't attempt to go into detail on how the cricket produces its music except to say that its louder notes are produced by a rapid vibration of the wings the right wings usually working over the left the edge of one acting on the file of the other to produce a shrill long sustained note like a violinist gone mad 
Psychedists, on the other hand, use their abdominal muscles to produce their sound. One of our best known crickets is a large black fellow who lives underground and rarely comes to us by day, except when the rains flood him out of his burrow. But when night falls, he sits on his doorstep and pours out his soul in a strident song. This troubadour's name is as impressive as his sound. Brachytripus potentosus. The mole cricket is a genius by itself. Mole crickets are tillers of the soil. They use their powerful forelimbs for shoveling up the earth and their hard heads for butting into it. Notwithstanding its earthly occupations, the mole cricket is sometimes moved to music, but as he repeats his note, a solemn, deep tone chirp, more burp than chirp, about a hundred times a minute, the performance cannot be monotonous. The cone-headed catidids are probably the most notable performers. Catidids are trim, slender insects, much in evidence in the fresh green grass of the monsoon. In the fields, their loud shrill notes may be heard by day and night. Sometimes one of them comes into the house and treats us to a sudden outburst of high-paced fiddling. In a room, it can be quite deafening and the sound is always more difficult to locate. It seems to come from everywhere. And finally, there are the three crickets, a band of willing artists who commence their performance at dusk. The sounds are familiar, but it is difficult to see the musicians. A tap on the bush upon which one of them sits will bring an immediate end to the performance. I wish the three crickets would do it in the manner of Nelson Eddy and Janet MacDonald. But it is only the males who sing in order to please their consorts. And speaking of Nelson Eddy, this is the 100th anniversary of his birth. A fine baritone, unjustly neglected. When I listen to his songs on tape or disc, the crickets and psychedists maintain a respectful silence. I'm sure they are listening. Thank you for attending this session. Do share and subscribe to this channel for more lessons like this. Check out other video lessons by clicking on the video.